Testing one, two, three. This will be the April 1st, 2015 City Council Board Interview Workshop meeting, followed by the regular meeting. Yep. <laughs> we got a we got a board meeting. We got a uh, interview. Yeah. Good evening. I'd like to call the order a workshop of the City Council of Satellite Beach, April 1st, 2015, approximately 6:50. Interview, interview. Excuse me, a board applicant, Steve Terry. Stephen, please come up here and uh, take a seat and um, tell us a little bit about yourself and what got you interested in helping out here. Uh, my name is Stephen Terry. Uh, I've lived here since 1993, and I'm a satellite graduate, uh, class of '98, and I'm also a local business owner here um, off of South Patrick in Indian Harbor. I'm an electrical contractor uh, for about nine years. We've done work with uh, the city and the city of the, for the PD and for the city with some cameras and stuff at uh, the PD. And I would just like to get more engaged in our community. Great. Thank you. Here you um, put down planning and zoning. Is that your first Correct. choice? Okay. Thank you. Questions for? I was just going to start with that. Uh, you chose that as your first choice. Any particular reason? Just because I think it kind of relates to some of the construction in, in, in my field that I do. Um, you know, I deal with drawings and plans. And I would also like to see, you know, where the city's going with its plan and zoning and where we're districting different things and what we're doing. Thank you, Mark. Uh, the question I'd like to ask, Steve, is just as far as your view of the city, what do you see as the issues out there that you think we might need to address? Any thoughts, any ideas? Um, I mean, I, I think there's, there's issues in every city municipality. I mean, I, I think our city is doing good in, in some areas, and in some areas we can have improvement. Um, I think we've got a lot of vacant commercial space okay. in the city, and I'd like to see, you know, what, what the city's doing to attract business and how we can get rid of some of the dilapidated and or vacant land and, and you know, get some better tax revenue from the vacant land and, and bring more people to our, to our community. Very good. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Donna? Steve, I just I just want to thank you for uh, you know stepping up and, and being a satellite graduate who's coming back and trying to give back to your city. And it's too bad your business is in Indy Harbor Beach, not in Satellite Beach. Not just thanks for it. But um, the um, Planning and Zoning Board generally meets on Mondays. Is Monday night a good night for you? Yes, M Monday night is a good night. I am a, a father of uh, two children. I've got a two and a half year old daughter and a six month old son. Okay. So, depending upon how everyone's feeling and what my wife's got going on, yes, I mean, I, I feel that I can commit to, I think it was just one, one night a month, correct? Right, right. right. And, uh, you know, as a as a electrical contractor, you know, a lot of the things that come through P&Z are site plans and things like that. So, you know, it seems like with your background, you know, you would be familiar with some of the things you're looking at. So, um, again, I, I thank you for stepping up, and that's all I have. Good. Steve, thank you very much. I told you it wouldn't be that tough. Um, it's an agenda item. It's near the end of the agenda packet. By no means do you have to stay. Um, they'll, they'll contact you, and uh, we vote for it at the end of our meeting. Okay. I was planning on staying, but I did have uh, something come up that I need to go attend to. So uh, thank you guys for your time. Yep. I look forward to hearing and Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Any further business on four applicants? Four? No, okay. sir. Nope. Steve, thank you very much. Yes. Thank you. This meeting's adjourned. We'll give it a couple of minutes, and we'll start our... Regular. Everybody ready? Good evening. I'd like to call the order a regular meeting of the City Council of Satellite Beach. April 1st, 2015, approximately 7 p.m. Please rise, join me in a moment of silence and a pledge. Moment of silence, please. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Moving on to agenda item three, citizens' comments. This is for non-agenda items. Is there any comments for non-agenda items? The floor is open.
Thank you, Vici. Thank you, Vici. Thank you, Vici. So uh, I made it to the meeting, I believe it was on February 26th, uh, related to uh, the issues with our roads and whatnot. And we had gone down the list, and, and I had uh, asked about Park Avenue and, uh, you know, the, the, the state ones. It didn't make it, right? It didn't make the list. Uh, but what I wasn't clear on is, is, is this a phased effort? So, in other words, the list that we have, uh, that we know about, uh, is that phase one? And is Park Avenue going to be uh, in phase two of, of a, a, you know, a rehabilitation effort? Yeah. Alan, would you like to speak on that, Alan? <clears throat> Actually, um, it's kind of... Uh, Ironic that you bring that up because I, I, w I responded to an email today that I got this morning. Our email was down for a while, so I, it may have been sent to me yesterday, but I didn't get it until this morning. Anyway, um, you know, Park Avenue um, is one of those areas where it's close but not, not there yet. Um, it's 30 years old, and there are some cracks there. Um, the biggest issue there is utility cuts. There's utility cuts across the road. Right. There's some cracking. The curbing is in worse shape than than the road itself. Okay. Um, Tell me everything I know. That's <laughs> so, great. Um, um, but there's no potholes. There's no degradation of the set, the sub base. So um, if, if we're going to spend the money, we want to spend the money on the worst areas. And Park Avenue is really not in the worst case yet. Um, so we're hoping that in the next cycle um, that we can get Park Avenue milled and paved. And um, as I said in the email, I think it's more important if we're going to spend money on Park Avenue that we concentrate maybe on sidewalks, a sidewalk from South Patrick to A1A um, before paving if it doesn't really need to be paved, uh, and some curb work because I think that's the more important and more pressing issue for that street than the, um, than okay. the road itself. If I could, uh, we, we spoke uh, during that meeting. Uh, we don't want to put any carts before the horses, right? So we don't, we don't want to do some work, and then we don't want to have to tear it back up, right? So what you're talking about, uh, uh, as far as the cracking swales, is that, is that what they call them, those little concrete? The uh, Miami curves. Okay, so those are compromised. Uh, and I know uh, this morning I got a lesson, um, and, and you verified just now for me, uh, that the wastewater is on the south side of park and the storm drains on the north side of park. Uh, just walking up and down park, I, I kind of took a, a, a view, and lo and behold, right at the end by South Patrick, there was a contractor, and they were doing the honey sucking uh, out of the, uh, the, 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 the wastewater drains. Um, but if you look, if you drive down that road again and you go to Pineapple, there seems to be a little concave in the road, actually a large concave in the road, uh, right on the, um, uh, it's the northeast corner. And that, to me, looks like another collapse. We have a collapse up there, which everyone knows because I brought it up before, up there on the uh, 100 uh, uh, block. And now this looks like there's a collapse developing right at the road on that corner. So I just want to bring that to your attention. Um, the other issue I had asked on, on that day, oh, is there a timetable that we can look at related to uh, the next phase? Is, is, has that been planned? Is, is there any dates, hard dates? I, and no, that, that tells me no. Are what we what we're saying though? Until we approve the utility tax, and until we get right. the actual funds before we start doing timetables, kind of going because if, if we get good bids back, we may move some projects up. So you know, we have a, a, a set amount of money. Um, sometimes we'll put out the bids and the construction bids, and they come in a little lower than we thought, so we can move some projects up. That may be, a, you know, so it's hard to tell you that. Um, usually we try to repave every three years. Three years? Yes. yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Uh, the second item I had was um, we talked about the depleted gen uh, uh, general fund, right, if, if I'm using the right terminology. Uh, and we have, uh, we have developed a method to generate revenue to replenish that fund. Uh, and, and the question I had asked 
during that meeting, and forgive me for not remembering, was once our fund, once our general fund is in the black, are we going to re realize uh, a, a lowering of the ad valorem? Mm -hmm. We, yeah, we yeah, will. We could. What, what we're what we're poising to do is is the utility tax increase will only be used for capital improvements. So all of our all of your utility tax goes to well, that's uh, the utility only, tax, right? But in that in that same instance, now we don't have to use general fund money for capital improvement. So okay. at the same, every year we will only be looking at increased personnel costs because every year that goes up. There's nothing right. really okay. we can do about so, that. So and the reason the reason why I like asked is because I, I'm here 20 years and I've looked at my my taxes and lo and behold, I've seen it go up and I've seen it go down. And I just wanted to make sure we're still following that flight plan. Okay, that's great. Um, Sir, you're, um, I have to ask you to wrap it up because the buzzer went off and you're I'm timeline. sorry. That's okay. okay I didn't if know there was a time. Any of your other questions you need to ask, please, if you would, see us Copy after on. the meeting or send us an email or please call great. Courtney. She'll be more than happy to. And, and I apologize to Mr. Bremer. I had been sending him emails, but it was to his personal email address, and, and that was my bad. I, I, I apologize to you. Okay. Thank you for coming, and we appreciate right. your okay. questions. And the utility yeah. tax agenda item, too, some of your questions might pertain well, to that, so you can speak again. against that. Yeah. Thank you. Again, floor is still open for non-agenda items. And then close the citizens' comment portion, city council comments. Steve. Uh, well, first, let's talk about, you know, some of us, we went to the uh, ethics training there in Cocoa City Hall, which is now a mandate for, for all of us now by Florida statute. So we did accomplish that. I think it was well attended, quite a few people there. It was nice to get that out of the way. Uh, the town hall meeting, I thought, went very well this week. Again, very well attended. A uh, lot of good uh, questions and communication going on. I know there was a lot uh, that was asked afterwards, which, which was also very good. Um, I did attend the town hall last night, um, again, with about 175 people that, that were there. And, uh, you know, it was open till 8 o'clock for questions. And we had questions all the way till 8 o'clock. Uh, they filled that up. And then I know they were still asking some questions after the fact. So I think that that went well also. Um, I don't know if any of you have seen the fact book that came out and probably in everybody's paper such, but I just, uh, as I looked through it, and since, you know, this is usually probably in production for quite a while, but I did get to notice that the manatee photo for Satellite <laughs> Beach got to be one of the big facts for here in Brevard County for the 2015-2016 season. So I thought that was quite, uh, quite interesting there. And uh, lastly, just uh, as a note, I did see uh, General Marno today. Um, as many of you know, she's being promoted to uh, Major General, two-star general, and she's also leaving for Colorado Springs. Um, she'll be replacing the guy that's, uh, that's out there, and they do have the replacement, uh, Brigadier General Wayne Monteith, who uh, works for the Secretary of the Air Force, will be coming down here to take her place. So uh, the guy at Colorado Springs retires in November, so I'm assuming she'll be leaving here not too many, many months away to get in place. So that was uh, that was the latest that I've heard from the base. But uh, she said she's going to miss, miss Beachside when I talk to her today. And that's all. Thank you. Mark? Uh, just a comment on the town hall meeting. Again, I received a number of very positive comments about our town hall meeting and, you know, the setup and all that you've done, Courtney. So thank you. I, I haven't heard anything negative about any of these things, but a lot of good positive comments out of the the one this past week, and I also attended the one last night at Satellite as well, and Steve's pretty much covered that, so thank you. Well, first of all, I want to apologize for not being here on the 18th. I was up in Tallahassee, and I was there with the Florida League of Cities, basically uh, representing Satellite Beach um, and the legislative process that goes on. Um, I got to meet with Senator Gardner, who is the Senate President, met with uh, Speaker of the House Steve Cristofoli and Senator Altman and Representative Tobia and Representative Goodson. Um, I testified in one Senate subcommittee and a House subcommittee. Um, we were up there talking about pension, pension issues, uh, letting cities negotiate locally, different water issues that go, are going on with the Indian River Lagoon and the Springs, uh, public record lawsuits that have been uh, filed in a lot of local cities. Um, 
communication service tax that uh, is one of the uh, revenue sources that all of these cities um, derive. And um, <clears throat> that was one of the big issues up there also. And um, I attended the ethics uh, training class along with uh, Steve and Mark um, this past Saturday. I attended the uh, town hall meeting on Monday night and the community meeting last night at Satellite High School. And I want to commend um, our staff for all five of the town hall meetings that were held throughout the city. <clears throat> we did a great job putting it together. We had more people that turned out for these meetings than we've ever had at any public meetings that we tried to involve the, the public. So. Those worked out great. The community meeting last night, I think, was very positive. It addressed the issues um, that we need to look at. I think the, um, the working relationship that we have with the Sheriff's Department and Indian Harbor Beach and the State Attorney um, is going to work out great for us. The last thing I wanted to address was um, there was an editorial in the paper over the weekend um, comparing Satellite Beach and our taxes with Cocoa Beach and Indian Harbor Beach. And I've been doing this a long time, and I've been involved in the Florida League cities a long time. There's over 400 cities in the state of Florida, and none of them are the same. Everything and the dynamics of all of these cities is different. And to compare Satellite Beach to Cocoa Beach, which is a um, highly commercialized city with a lot of condominiums, they have a huge tax base based on the fact that they have built the beachfront um, as well as they have. We don't have that in Satellite Beach. And the mayor has alluded in all of these town hall meetings to surveys that were done in Satellite Beach that go back to the early 80s that talked about preserving beachfront, not building on the ocean. And when you don't build on the ocean, and when you don't develop an island like Sampson's Island, you lose the revenue that would have come in from those places that would have given you the ad valorem taxes that we are all sharing right now. We moved here for the quality of life that we have. And when you take those properties off the tax roll, there is a cost. And the cost is the people who live here with that quality of life pay a little bit more than the other communities do. Because all of those vacant lots that are on A1A that we have, there's no one paying property taxes on them. To compare us with Indian Harbor Beach, who doesn't have a paid fire department, and if you look at our fire department, it's about two mills that you pay in your taxes for our fire department. But when you dial 911, paramedics come if you're having an emergency medical situation, and they're there in two and a half to four minutes. That doesn't happen in Indian Harbor Beach. Both cities are great cities. Their dynamics are different. Indian Harbor Beach is built on their beachfront. They have capitalized on that revenue that we're not capitalizing on. So you can't compare these cities. It's like comparing apples to oranges. It doesn't work. The editorialist that wrote that um, obviously doesn't understand the dynamics of our city. So I just wanted to get that out there because I think it needs to be said. We are not Cocoa Beach, and we are not Indian Harbor Beach. We are Satellite Beach, and people long before me had the vision of preserving beachfront and preserving land in Satellite Beach. And Frank alluded to this in the meetings. It's been there ever since. So thank you. Thank you. I also to thank the city, the staff. The town hall meetings were, were great. Um, we had great turnouts, very good input from people, people engaged, and that's what we really wanted. And to the staff, thank you for, for doing it. The satellite high last night was very good. Very enjoyable. If you weren't there, you miss it. There was a lot of great questions asked, some great answers. And I'll tell you, when you talk about the students at Satellite, there's some pretty amazing students there. A young man got up and gave a talk that was pretty great. And what he said when it was done, he said, you know, my grandfather was here, was one of the first teachers and football coaches. And so afterwards, I had to ask him, and it was Travis Aiken's grandson, oh, really? who was a teacher oh. there, was on the football coach, and actually hired um, Mr. Elliott for his first job ever in coaching. So, um, you know, but the young man was incredibly well spoken, and, and I think he said his was one of the talks to me that really stood out.
and uh, really amazing young man. And it, it was very good, I thought. And to the chief and to everybody who put it together, um, thank you. Um, any further comments from city council? No, sir. Thank you. Moving on, city manager's report. Uh, thank you, Mayor. I do have quite a long report today. I'm sorry. Um, I've been out for a couple of meetings. The first reason was at the parent meeting with Satellite High, and then I was on vacation. And I know Andy did a great job in my place. Um, probably too good of a job. It was making me a little worried, but, <laughs> but I am back. Um, I wanted to make sure everybody knows about the flashlight egg hunt at, um, at our recreation department. It's at the DeSoto soccer field, actually. And um, if you haven't uh, registered your child for that, it's a lot of fun. Um, tickets are going fast, so contact the recreation department if you want to go to that. Uh, we also have breakfast with the Easter Bunny at Pelican Beach Park on April 4th. That's going to be a very large event, so if you're planning to go to Pelican Beach Park for something else that day, <laughs> you might want to go to Hightower. Uh, <laughs> it's going to be very well attended, as always. It's, all, it's sold out already, um, so uh, uh, please be aware of that. We also, on Easter, speaking of Easter, we have three churches that have uh, sunrise service, one at High Tower, one at um, Sunrise, the Michael P. Crotty Park, and one at Pelican Beach Park. The High Tower and Pelican Beach, Pi Pelican Beach Park services are very busy, and um, so if you're not attending service and you're driving down that roadway at 6.30 in the morning, please be aware <laughs> of all the people crossing that road, our police. Um, the city dedicates a lot of our police resources to those events. Um, to assist our community, and so they will be out there, but it's still very difficult because there's so many people that attend those. Um, so if you can avoid that area, take South Patrick Drive if, if you're not going to attend those. Um, April 3rd and 4th, we also have the PAL Garage and Bike Sale at the Teen Zone from 8 to 1, and this is an event that they make quite a bit of their funding for the year, so if you have a chance, if you need a bike um, or anything from a garage sale, uh, please stop by there. I did um, put in my report about the community meeting um, held on Monday, and we, I did get um, some emails from residents about that meeting. Um, we did have some ideas that came out of the meeting that we're already researching, and hopefully we'll have it on your agenda at the next meeting, um, particularly regarding, uh, they called it a green committee, um, talking like, kind of like an environmental committee. Um, so we will bring that research back to you at your next meeting and let you um, have that discussion. We also, um, for those meetings, that was our last one, and I know that's hard on us because we do have a lot of night meetings, but um, the, I think the success of those meetings were the locations. They were in City Hall, um, and then also the fact that we split up the city, and then we also sent notices out to each homeowner, so each property received a notice. Um, and it, there was a cost to that, but I just don't see the point of having meetings if you're not going to properly notice people to get there, so um, that's probably more of a waste of money than not. So um, I know that some of you had some um, desire to do those every year, and I think that's a great idea. So we would just plan to do that kind of around the same time frame because it's right before budget, which is always good to do that. And so we'll, we'll plan on doing those next year. Um, our town hall meeting for the um, crime issues um, the next night was great. Um, we did. Um, I did want to let you know that we are um, writing a letter to Florida today to thank them for their community partnership that they um, did in assisting us in getting not only the word out, but also helping us frame the meeting um, because they received phone calls like we did on some of the issues that they heard people were concerned about and it allowed us to kind of devise some of the strategies that were presented at the meeting, which included um, a task force to monitor social media, in which the state attorney's office, Indian Harbor Beach, and the um, sheriff's office are all participating in. Um, so that's the first of its kind in the county, and I think that's going to be very um, a beneficial. And we'll, what we'll do is monitor that um, committee and, you know, hopefully come back in like three months and provide you a report on how successful that's been. Um, I did also attend the um, Economic Development Commission board meeting today, right before this meeting. And if you ever wonder why... Um, you know, we are members of this important um, commission. It's because when I went there, at least four of the CEOs that were there um, said, we were at your meeting last night <laughs> because they live in our community and they have children that go to Satellite High School. So they were, um, they came up to let us know how wonderful it was and they appreciated it and they felt that we um, were trying to address their issues and, um, you know, felt that, you know, basically this is why we live in Satellite Beach. Um, so that was exciting to see. Uh, the... 
The, um, and in going into my informational items, we, I provided you my evaluation um, as part of my contract. We do this every year. My um, anniversary date is April 30th, so we try to do that prior to that. Um, so I provided the forms to you. Yes, sir? Yeah, is, is, are we supposed to use the form that's in the packet, or did you give us something? Because I haven't gotten anything else. Okay, we can email that yeah. out to you. So you if you'd rather email it, yeah. yeah. So we can do that to you. Okay. Um, we'll email that out to you. Okay. Um, if, you, if you would like, go ahead and quickly go through the forms and make sure that this is a good form, because last year we had a long discussion about whether the form was good. <laughs> so it would be nice to know if it was fine with everybody, and then um, if it is, we'll go ahead and use that. And then if, um, when you get that, just call me and we'll schedule a meeting to go, to go over it. Okay, go over your results. Um, I'd like to have the results of the review on the May 6th meeting, so that kind of gives you a goal of, of when to turn that in. Um, the City of Satellite Beach has a Relay for Life team. We partnered, um, we had this, actually the fire department was doing it and then um, the City Hall jumped in and then we all just kind of combined. So we will be um, having an event at the Satellite High School, so we'll have a table and we'll be participating in that event. We will also have a fundraising event at Pelican Beach Park on April 17th from 5 to 7 p.m. So please come out and support that important initiative. Um, in this, you know, Relay for Life, I provided some information on what Relay for Life is in, my pa in your packet under my report. Um, it basically addresses all kinds of cancer. So if you have anyone who knows, you know anyone who's had cancer or yourself or your survivor, any type of cancer, um, this, this is an important organization for you. Um, we did receive a notice from Florida Power and Light that our electricity rates will be decreasing due to fuel savings from the reduction in natural gas costs. So that's exciting. Um, and this reduction will take place in May of 2015. And I placed that email from Nancy Flickinger in my budget, uh, in my um, uh, report. And then, of course, the city received our Distinguished Budget Presentation Award again. Um, so we, were, we have received that award again. That award um, says that basically our finance department and our, our finance team, as well as um, Councilwoman Gott, who helped us edit it again, um, did a fantastic job in providing uh, a, a well-presented budget that provides a, kind of like a guideline um, that the the uh, Government Finance Office Association provides to us that we follow in, in creating that budget document. I have received a complimentary letter from our former, um, from a former Satellite High School parent regarding our school resource officer, Sergeant Paul Couture. Um, as you know, the last you know, month has probably been a little hard on him. The um, person who does that well of a job isn't used to criticism like that. Um, so a lot of letters and, and phone calls were flooding in from parents that were thankful um, for his services for their ch from their children in the past, um, and this is one of those uh, recent ones. I also received a complimentary letter regarding Pelican Beach Park and the work of our staff um, regarding that park, so that we've attached that. Um, also, our farmer's market now has 26 vendors, and we um, have a total income so far of $6,866. And to let you know, we began that market with one vendor. <laughs> so it's been doing very well. Um, so I just wanted to give my congratulations to Jacqueline Filcher and uh, Carrie Stoms for making the market such a great success. I drove by there this past week, and the whole parking lot was full. It was pretty cool. Um, and then we also received a thank you letter from Good, um, Goodwill regarding donations we made as a result of our citywide garage sale event. So they were very appreciative of, uh, of that, and great job to the Recreation Department for that event. Um, one more thing, I'm sorry, one more little thing. <laughs> I, I did get a, um, I sent you an email, so you do have this, but I, I did get a um, copy of the Shore News, which is the South Patrick Residents Association um, newsletter um, from the unincorporated area next to our city between uh, here and Pineda. Uh, this newsletter talks about the uh, dredging project that the county will be doing for the demucking of the Indian River Lagoon. Um, the county needs a transfer site, basically, to when they uh, remove the muck out of the river, they need to dry it somewhere. And then after that is done, they pack it up and transport it. Um, they're proposing to use a 10-acre site that's right there by Pineda Causeway. When you get ready to get off the exit, you see the big bushes of Brazilian pepper trees right there. Yeah. That's actually a property, um, and they want to use that site for that property. 
Um, apparently, the South Patrick Shores, well, a portion of the, that area is upset about that. And in, in this newsletter, there is a suggestion that um, the county use Samson's Island for that. Um, I just wanted to let you know I did contact the county and let them know that we would not be interested in that unless our citizens received the benefit of that demucking directly. Um, so we will be attending, I will be attending that meeting. They have a meeting on April 13th at the Schechter Center at 715, and I'll, and I'll be at that meeting to talk about that. Okay. What day is that? April 15th? April 13th. It's at the same night as League of Cities, so I'll have to meet League of Cities to be there. Um, but, but I will be there. Any other questions for the city manager? Courtney, thank you very much. Welcome back. Thank you. Okay. Moving on to agenda item six, discuss, take action on an agreement between the city of Satellite Beach and the Satellite Beach Women's Club. Courtney. Uh, thank you, Mayor. As you recall, um, when I started here, <laughs> we had um, 149,000 sitting in restricted reserves. Uh, and that was a donation made by the Women's Club for um, oceanfront preservation and, and improvement. Um, we negotiated an agreement with them at that time to allow us to use the, that money for temporary reserves because we had no money in reserves at the time. Um, since then, we have now nine hundred and some thousand dollars in reserves, so we don't need that to sit in reserves anymore. Um, we do have, however, a gap between the Shell Street budget and the Shell Street cost. So, um, and, and interestingly enough, it's a gap of one hundred and fifty thousand dollars. So, um, the Women's Club has graciously agreed to use those funds for that project. Um, so that's what this agreement does. Uh, the Women's Club, have already had, they have already voted, approved, and signed that agreement. Great. So we're asking for your approval. Thank you. Questions from the council? No, I don't have any questions. Um, I'll at this time open up for public comment on agenda item six. Good evening, council. Dale Abrams, CRA resident. Um, I remember when we worked on this project, and I and correct me if I'm wrong, that there was something stated regarding this agreement where if we had any type of a disaster or damage done to beach accesses, the walkovers, that we were going to utilize the funds in this particular account for that. So my question is, if we do have any issues with beach accesses going forward, whether it's a storm or whether, you know, some kid comes along and rips it up, whatever, or if we have wood splintering and things of that nature, where is the money going to come from regarding that? And also the other question is, is that I thought we had budgeted 400 k for the Shell Street project, mm -hmm. and are we using funds from the stormwater fund to deal with the stormwater issue down there? Um, are we using CRA funds to deal with some of the issues down there, whether it's the stormwater, whether it's the sewer hookup? Um, how is that all working into that? Okay. Um, the Women's Club agreement, we actually negotiated it for those purposes because we had no reserves. Um, now we have reserves. So if we do have a hurricane that destroys any of our, you know, capital assets, then that's what the reserves are for. So we would use reserves for that purpose. Um, so we don't need that anymore. We have reserves now. So we don't need the use of the Women's Club funds for that. Um, we actually had that agreement in place until next year, um, but we, we have built up our reserves so fast that now we can go ahead and, and use the Women's Club donation for, for what they would really like to do, which is a beachfront project. The Shell Street project, we don't have uh, stormwater funds for that project, so it's from, it is funded for, by the CRA at 400000 and the Women's Club agreement, which is 150000 The bids for that project came in at 550000 So, Thank you. Floor is still open for public comments. Here and then back to council. 
You know, the Women's Club has been instrumental in our city in, in beach preservation, and, and this is, they were instrumental in that property that's south of Pelican Beach Park that we have. So this, this is, as Courtney said, this fits right into, you know, what they've always tried to do. So um, I'll make a motion to approve the agreement between the city of Satellite Beach and the Women's Club authorizing their donation to the city of $150,000 to be used for the Shell Street Beach Access Project. I have a motion by Vice Mayor Montanaro. In authorizing Courtney to sign it. Second. I have a, a motion by Vice Mayor Montanaro, second by Councilman Brimer. Further questions from Council? Just, Courtney, I know we've talked about this before. When it comes time, everything's rolled out and it's all done. I think we need to make sure we do a special recognition for this. Oh. this um, and just to throw it back up. Rebecca Castillo, who's the president right now, is here also, so she wants to say hi. <laughs> Thank you. I think her hand was shaking when she was signing up. <laughs> I know with most of the, our projects they've done have been beautiful, and without your help, we wouldn't get it done, but we've been great partners for years, and thank you very much. Yeah, the city wouldn't be where it is without you guys. You've always been here for us, so we thank you. In more ways than one. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Um, any further discussion? Here none. Lenore? Councilman Osborne? Yes. Councilman Brimer? Yes. Vice Mayor Montanero? Yes. Mayor Cristina? Yes. yes. Motion carries. Move on to agenda item seven. Now we can this time open up a public hearing. Discuss, take action on ordinance number 1102. Jim? Ordinance number 1102, an ordinance of the City of Satellite Beach, Brevard County, Florida, amending sections 58-151 and 58-159 of the Satellite Beach Code of Ordinances, raising the utility tax on the sale and purchase of electricity, metered natural gas, liquid petroleum gas, and manufactured gas from 6% to 10%, providing an effective date. It's the second reading of ordinance number 1102. Thank you. Time. Comment from... I'll make a motion to approve on second reading. Second. I have a motion by Councilman Brimer, second by Vice Mayor Montanero to approve ordinance number 1102 on second reading. Further discussion? I would just add again, I kind of I walked my street and a couple streets over and kind of laid out what, what it was going to happen with it. And you know, I live on Cinnamon, so obviously my street is not in bad shape at all. But even those people that I talked to up and down my street thought this was a good idea. I had not one negative comment, not one person say not to do it. Um, the only question I got, actually, and I, I uh, talked to Courtney about it, is they said, obviously, the roads last as long as they do, and this is for a debt service of 15 years. When 15 years is up, are we still going to have money to keep paving streets in it? Because like I said, obviously, Cinnamon's in great shape right now, so it won't need it for years to come. But, uh, <clears throat> you know, as I, as I see it, as long as we do get a, a paving schedule and uh, we stay on it like we're trying to do so that we can keep getting all these streets, like I said, I, I have not got one negative comment about it yet. Everybody I've talked to, and I said, and that's what people that are living on good streets were for it. Thank you. Further comments? At this time, open up for public comments on agenda item seven relating to ordinance 1102. Dale Abrams, CRA resident. <clears throat> a tax is a tax. I don't support this, and I think you're all aware of this, okay? Um, I wasn't real crazy about the stormwater increase. First week, you know, it was 65 to 84, then it went from 65 to 104, but it doesn't matter what the citizens say regarding this tax, okay? If they don't support it, it doesn't matter because you have already made the decision that you're gonna pass it. At the end of the day, people get tired of being taxed, okay? Whether it's from your city or whether it's from the county or whether it's from the federal government. And I think we could have done things differently, okay? And the question is, where were these road projects back in 04, 03, 05, and 06, before the bubble blew up. To answer your question on 03, 04, 06, we paved roads in Satellite Beach on a very consistent schedule back then. DeSoto was the last one. We, we paved them on approximately a three or four year cycle when the funds got built up to a point and 
we did that so that we would get the best bang for our buck. And we did, Ray, we did paving. Uh, after 2006 was the last time we paved. The recession hit. We did not have, there was not the funds. I wasn't on council then, but I have looked back. There was not the funds to continue the process. More happened between 2006 and 2015 than just we didn't have the funds. There's a whole other avenue that's been added to it, and it's stormwater. So there's a lot more to this than just did you pave a road. We've kept our roads in pretty darn good shape. Some of the roads are original paving in Satellite Beach. And I said this at our last town hall meeting. The city didn't build these roads. The developers built the roads when they put them in years ago, turned them over to the city of Satellite Beach. That's why we don't own the roads in Patrick and Montecito. They were never turned over. They're private roads because they didn't meet the standards that the city set forth there. So we did do the paving. The paving was done consistently till 2006, and therefore we did not have the funds to continue that. Nine years later, with stormwater being an issue and the need to repave roads that haven't been paved in a long time, this is it. I attended every single meeting. I can tell you I talked to a lot of people on this issue. I talked to them whether they wanted ad valorem or did they care about being in the utilities tax. And I can tell you that one to two people that I ever get a response from, <clears throat> one of them was tonight here on a letter, that ever was against it. And I think we went out as a council and as a city and presented it to our residents. We gave people a lot of notice and asked them at these meetings, if you have a better idea of how to do this, please come forward to us. And it's not like we are a different group of people. We pay taxes, too, in the city. I pay taxes a long time. My family has in this city. The roads need to be repaid. And the majority of the people that I talk to, the great majority, has told me that, you know, you presented it well. You showed that there was a need. Use our money wisely, but infrastructure is important to us. So that's the comments I had on it. Floor still open. Please. Hey, uh, AC, Park Avenue, Satellite Beach. It's all right. Nobody likes death and taxes, right? Um, least of all me. Uh, th there's one thing I didn't see here uh, that troubles me. And Steve, I uh, I walked up my street and talked about it with my neighbors. Um, uh, working for a DOD contractor, uh, I've worked with the military quite a bit. And I've grown a love for the retired. Uh, 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 a veteran and for retired people in general, the greatest generation, the Korean War vets, I feel very strongly that before we go ahead and commit to this, uh, I, I don't know, maybe it's already been considered, but I feel like that uh, this community uh, is probably filled with quite a few retirees, and I feel like they should be exempt from this, this uh, 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 raise. So just uh, throwing it out there uh, for debate um, before we went ahead and committed to this. Was there any consideration regarding the, uh, the elderly, the retirees, the people on fixed incomes, and our veterans? Uh, that's, that's all I have to say. Thanks. Thank you. Floor still open. My name's Gordon Clark, 359 Howard Avenue, Satellite Beach. I've been a resident of this city since 1971. I'm against this increase, totally. Based on the information, and the only information I got is what was in the, in the uh, uh, Beachcaster. But according to that, we should have $900,000 in the bank now because you were reserving 100000 a year to do roads. Where is it? Courtney, you want to address it? We just got your letter today, sir, and that was one of the letters I said that. And Courtney is going to address your letter because I, we feel that the numbers stated here are not correct, way off. And uh, I sent her a correction to the numbers. Okay. I, I had that, too. I it's just the second got page. A, second page? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and, yes, Courtney will get with you and we'll be able to answer your questions on this letter. The money wasn't put aside for those number of years because the money wasn't there. 
That's why they stopped. It should be there, though. We have been putting that money aside, supposedly reserved, for all these many years. Now it's gone. I'm not saying, you know, where it went. I don't know where it went, and I don't think any on this board knows where it went, because it's gone. It was never there. It was never there, sir. Then why? Because it says in Beach Caster you're supposed to have it. Would you like that? If he's done, I can do it. She'll answer your question. All right. In the Beach Caster, we indicated that the city in the past, prior to the economic downturn, reserved $100,000 a year for street repaving. And then once we banked around $300,000, we would go through and pave a number of streets and however many streets that carried us. In the economic downturn, the city literally didn't do any capital improvements because we were trying to maintain services. Then we should have that money because it was collected and it wasn't affected by the downturn. Yes, it is. When we had the economic downturn, your property taxes went down considerably because your property values went down. And my valuations went up and my millage rates went up to take care of it, and they've been going up since 2005. Let her answer your question. In 2007 and 2006, the economic downturn started to happen, and your property values went down at the same time. I know. And that's how we collect our revenue. So literally the city's property valuations were cut in half. I mean, it's almost – I know my house was valued in half. And so, you know, that's how we collect revenue. It's based on a millage rate and your property value. True. So our total income that we brought into the city went down considerably. So the city was cutting things during that time. We weren't adding money to anything. And most of our capital improvements halted, just like all over the state of Florida and the United States. The local governments didn't do any capital improvements because we couldn't afford it. You weren't here then, were you, as manager? No. Okay. I was in Titusville doing the exact same thing over there, cutting our budget. Yeah, and everybody else was down here increasing millage rates and – to make up for the difference. Thank you. I hope we answered your questions. If you'd like more, the court would be more than happy to sit with you. I will, too, and be able to answer any more questions you have. Thank you. Thank you. The floor is still open. David Alma, resident. I agree no one likes to have their taxes raised, but the situation we're in reminds me a lot of condominium owners. You know, they want to live there as cheap as they can. They don't want to spend money on reserves. But then when their balconies start falling off, they have to come up with 20 grand. If they would have paid as they went, they wouldn't have that problem. So we need to do this, so we just need to get it done. Okay, fine. San Lai Beach President. I have been in San Lai Beach President since 1968. I've uh, lived on Coconut Street and I don't live in uh, Caribbean Drive. Uh, I, support, I, I support this increase. This is a needed item, not a, something that we want. It's been a long time since San Lai Beach uh, Council members have increased taxes or have voted on anything because people wanted it. It's a needed item. We need to get those roads paid. If not, they're going to get worse. It's just as simple as that. We have had problems the last few years because of the economic downturn. We've had employees going five and six years without pay raises. Without one cent pay raise, they stayed loyal, they stayed with us. We need to get this done and get it done as quickly as possible before this rose deteriorate to the point where it's going to cost you more money to fix them in the long run. If it's on this agenda, about this agenda item. It is. I, I, I never got any feedback. Oh, I can, do, I can answer that. Yeah, I was going to after we were done, but um, I can do that now. 
We, we can't, unfortunately, this type of tax, we can't exempt certain populations out of it. Um, it's not like the property tax. It's not collected by the tax collector. It's collected by FPL, actually. Um, so, but, but one thing that we did look at is I, I told you that FPL was actually decreasing the rates because of the natural gas. Um, and at the same time, we're increasing the tax. Um, so we think there's going to be a buffer at the, with that. Um, and secondly, I think, um, Councilman Osmer, do you still have your bill? Can I borrow that? <laughs> so. I wish I had this electric bill, by the way. Um, this bill is $100, $101.82, and the utility tax is $4.43. Um, so that is a 6% tax. Uh, you know, and, and right now we're talking about a 10 percent. So um, if you're looking at, I'm going to try to get as close as I can. I just want to show you what the actual impact will be, um, because I, we did, we did sit and think about this with, um, with the, um, you, you know, with our elderly population. And, and it's eight dollars, so their increase would be about four dollars. Okay, I'm just going to make a comment. And I'm sorry, you already had your chance up here. The, okay. But I would just like to clarify too: is, as I understand, there is an impact. Um, the problem is, is we have, we have had many people that are supportive because they want to see us do these projects. Um, we've had a couple that are concerned with the tax. Um, the issue is for, for the staff and for the council, and I'm, I don't want to speak for them, but I definitely speak for the staff, we have millions of dollars in assets in these roads. And if we don't do something, we're letting millions of dollars go to waste. Because the longer you wait on roads, the more they cost. And so if and the, other, the other side to that is we have yet to hear from anyone on how to cut $2.5 million out of our $12 million budget to afford these projects. I haven't heard one idea on how to do that. So if we don't have an idea to cut, then we have to raise the revenue. And, and that's, that's basically the strategy that we're here for. Because when I ask people how to cut it, I don't get an answer. I don't hear any Desires to cut your fire service, I have no. Do that, please. That's very no sir, I'm sorry. Okay, I'll, I'll explain to you, please. Let, let me tell you the rules, okay? You have your three minutes here for each agenda item, okay? And that's the rules of the game. You have one turn up here for three minutes. If we need to ask any other of your questions, Courtney or myself will be more than happy to meet with you and ask any of them. But once you sit down, that was your turn up to the podium. Okay. Uh -huh. So anyway, that that's basically what we've been saying at the community meetings is we we haven't heard an alternative. We haven't heard an alternative to cut um, and we haven't heard the desire to let these facilities go. Well, we can't say anything, so <laughs> thank you. And sir, we'll be more than happy to discuss it with you sure, afterwards, right. please. We'd be more than happy to. Um, any co public comments still open? Hearing no further, back to council. Um, I'm going to say something on the longer you wait, the more it costs. And Roosevelt is a great example of that. Roosevelt's a project that's really been needed for a long time. Um, Roosevelt is a pretty unique project, too. Uh, Roosevelt's a concrete road. It was paved over with asphalt. And it's been paved over a few times. And it's gotten to a point now where that no longer can be done. The road base is gone. There's cracks all over that road. And it's a major thoroughfare in our city. It's a east-west connection. And again, it is a, an expensive project because of how long we've waited to do that. We've lost a roadbed there. And there's other roads like that if we would wait. You know. I listen and I appreciate the gentleman coming tonight on Harwood. I've lived here since 1959, 60. I've paid taxes all those years. You know, I live in an area right now my road doesn't need it. 
But as a city, the infrastructure of the city has to be kept up. And, you know, we have minimal ways to do it. We've looked at other alternatives. We've asked people for different suggestions. And one thing I have never heard from anybody is don't do it. Don't repair your roads. Don't repair your stormwater. Stormwater is part of this infrastructure. This is not just totally roads. The state has mandated stuff, mandated us to clean up the Indian River Lagoon and has put some restrictions on stormwater. And we have to abide by it with the best knowledge that we have today to use to make it the best. And that's all we're doing. Everybody up here pays the tax, just like anybody in the audience. And we don't like to raise it, but I have roads that are failing. And I've had people call me about sidewalks cracking and so forth. They're all up keeps of the city. And we're at a point in our city's age that we have to do it. And if I can just make one more comment. I know you're concerned about Park Avenue, and we've responded to another resident on that street. And the city had, would, would love to meet with the residents on that street to see if there's anything we can do to temporarily to make that road better and then plan on making that road part of our next you know, phase. Um, if we can move it up, then we want to see what we want to do to move it up. Um, so we're open to those suggestions, but we would need to meet with the residents on the street to do that. So if you're, if y'all are willing to do that, we'll be glad to do that. Sure, and that wasn't the point of any Okay. Okay, I just wanted to make sure that you knew that we're open to, to doing that. And we, we do that all the time. You know, we had residents on Orange that had the same issue and, you know, so we'll be glad to do that. Courtney, back when we first started this, uh, and you've kind of touched on it, and Mayor has too, but we had people come up to the podium and say they didn't like this, and they were going to get back to you with a better idea uh, how to do this other than to do what we're doing or looking at what we're doing tonight. Have any of those people come back to you at all with any better ideas, new re repaving ideas, any of that stuff? So you, so you can honestly say you haven't heard squat since that those comments have been made. So, okay, that, that's all I wanted to do. Actually, I, I got ideas. Um, but they're all supporters. So I have a lot of people who send in ideas um, who want to see the projects, and, and then they provide some inf information on how they want it done. Or, um, you know, like we had a meeting, and, you know, please include Roosevelt Avenue, you know. And um, I have one. You, it's in, these are in your packet. We received one um, from a – I thought it was kind of – it was kind of humorous, actually. He said that he would gladly pay $200 a month <laughs> or a year <laughs> if we included his street. So, yeah, but he was happy with what we were presenting. Um, he's lived, you know, and and this was in response to the News 13 article. Um, so, you know, it's it. We have a lot of good suggestions. You know, one um, one person wanted us to use native plants when we did the landscaping on Roosevelt. So great. Great suggestions, and um, but most of all of the suggestions I have received have been in the to do the projects, to do the tax increase. That the, they have no problem with the tax increase. They want to see the projects, and here's some ideas on how to do it. But no alternative construction ideas that no we're going to No financing. No no financial information because yeah. that yeah. was what was presented. Exactly. Financial. Yeah. yeah all, all that whole thing. Okay. That's that's all I had, Mr. Mayor. Anything further? I just wanted to go back. You know, the comment was made that, you know, there are so many people that are against this. But I think when you look at that letter that, that we received, that the one guy came or has been here for 27 years, longer than I've been here, obviously. And he says, I, for one, support the recommended tax hike of approximately 100 per year. Heck, I will throw in $200 if the job gets done, and I would even double it if my street got repaved. That doesn't sound like somebody who's against it. And, and that wasn't the only one that we got. Now, that is a longtime resident who's been here 27 years who's willing to double what we're asking for to get the project done. Those are the type of comments the majority of, of what I've heard. And, and and that's why I say, you know, when you, and again, I, I didn't make my mind up from day one. I, again, not only did I not get enough input in, but I went out and asked people for their input. I've talked to people on Ocean Spray. I've talked to people across the street from Schechter Center and all the people. Again, I talked to many people who don't need their street paved anytime soon. And all of those people were for this. 
And actually, a lot of them said they were for it as opposed to raising them ad valorem. Mm -hmm. Almost every one of them made a very specific point that they did not want ad valorem to pay for this. And that's why every answer that I got, and, I, and I, you've seen the emails, they, they've got them out there, and that's exactly what they're saying. I also just wanted to point out to you, a lot of all of the other cities, um, it, with the exception of Indian Harbor Beach, Indian Harbor Beach charges for water as well, um, and they're at 6 percent. But all the other cities are at 10 percent, and a lot of them charge for water. Um, but we, um, we are the only city that puts our utility tax into a capital fund that has to be used for capital expenses. So it doesn't go to pay personnel costs or anything like that. It is, it is only for capital expenses, something that residents can touch, feel, and experience on their own. Thank you. The only thing I wanted to say is if any of you drive on Riverside Drive, there's an example of a road that wasn't addressed by the municipalities that were involved, which was Melbourne, because part of the road is in Melbourne, part of the road is county, part of it's state road. And they could never get together to figure out how they were going to do it. And that project has been going on now for a year. And the inconvenience that it's causing the residents of that area that have to drive on it every day, and I'm fortunate I only have to go down on once a week. But, you know, we don't want to inconvenience our residents. I mean, we need to get these things done. We need to get them done when we can get them done and repave them and not have to do that type of road bed work in the city. So I'm, I'm all for this. Any further discussion? Yes, sir. Lenore? Councilman Osborne? Yes. Vice Mayor Montanero? Yes. Councilman Brimer? Yes. Mayor Tino? Yes, motion passes. Thank you, staff. Thank you. This time, moving on to agenda item eight, discuss, take action on agreement between the City of Satellite Beach and the Public, Finan Public Financial Management, Inc. Courtney. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Uh, we, we, had, we asked you and you did approve a request for proposal for financial advisory services on the January 21st, 2015 meeting. Uh, and on your March 18th meeting, you did accept the recommendation to select Public Financial Management, Inc. as our financial advisory services firm. Um, we did provide or we did negotiate a contract for services, which we included in your packet. And at this time, we're asking for your approval for that contract. Thank you. Questions, Council? I do have a question on it. Um, can we get this in place? Are they going to come back to us or to staff and give us a handful of recommendations on different ways to finance this? And then the council will vote on that. Did, did you want to come <clears throat> Mayor, council members, Jay Glover from Public Financial Management. Um, yes, that's exactly what we do. So we'll look at the revenue stream you have put in place today. We'll suggest ways to start through a transaction and get you the lowest cost possible and to provide flexibility moving forward. So that's exactly what we do and similar to what we do for many municipalities around the state. Thank you very much. Any further questions needed to answer? Uh, this time open up for public comment on agenda item eight. <coughs> Dale Abrams, CRA resident. Um, can we explain to some of the folks that may not be aware of where this money is going and how much it's going to be? How much it's going to cost us for this service? Oh, for the rates? Uh, the rates are in here. Um, so it depends on what they're doing. Um, but they, this is similar to any service contract we have with our, you know, like our engineering contracts and things like that. But the managing director would be at an hourly rate of $185 an hour. Senior managing consultant would be $185 an hour. And a senior analyst would be $175 an hour. You said that wasn't your question? No. Then, what, then please clarify your question. I'm sorry. Thank you for letting me come back. Explain to some of the folks that may not be aware of how much money we're looking to go borrow, what we're going to utilize that money for, okay? And is there a situation where we are, could we borrow more than two and a half million dollars? Okay, thank you. We're going after two and a half million dollars to do the projects 
that we have slated. If the projects come under cheap, less than what we thought they would go for, we're going to pave more roads. We're going to do more projects with that money. So it's 2.5 is what we're asking for. Not more than 2.5, 2.5. We've stated that quite a few times. Okay. Public comment still open. Hearing them back to council. I'll make a motion to approve the financial manage financial public financial management agreement for financial advisory services. Second. I have a motion by Vice Mayor Montanero, second by um, Councilman Osmer. Further discussion from council? Yep. Hearing none, Lenore. Councilman Primer? Yes. Councilman Osmer? Yes. Vice Mayor Montanero? Yes. Mayor yes, the motion passes. Thank you, Courtney. Thank you. Moving on to agenda item nine, discuss take action on submitting a section 319H grant application for the soda stormwater treatment project. Good evening. Before you tonight is a request for grant um, authorization for a 319 for the proposed DeSoto Park Pond project that we've been discussing at these uh, community meetings. Um, the, the plan is well known by now, I'm sure. Um, we would like to, the, the project, total project estimated cost is um, $950,000. Originally it was nine twenty, dollars and then we looked at uh, monitoring costs. So that uh, another additional $30,000 brought it up to $950,000. Um, $560,000 of that, um, $560,500 would be what the, uh, the grant funds that we're looking for with the city paying um, up to $389,500. So it would be a 41-59 match. 41%, the city paying 41% gives us more points towards uh, attaining the, uh, the grant. So if we get this grant, which we didn't think we were before, now we've applied for it. And if we do, it's going to pay for, to just round figures off, 60% of this project. Yes. Okay. Questions from council? Um, yeah. Alan, I've got some comments back as far as, as we move forward with this. And I know I'm way ahead on this, but there's a lot of residents around that area that would like to have some input on how that whole project is designed. I mean, as far as the land goes, positioning, can more be saved and that sort of thing. I just, whether it's you or whether it's Courtney, if we can somehow solicit that participation as much as possible. I mean, there'll be, there'll be people who can't attend meetings, but they can send emails or whatever they can just to be involved with this. Because I think it's going to be critical. Because this is a big change down there. Absolutely. I mean, and, so. and once we get further into the design phase, there was a concept drawn up for for the meetings and just to, you know, for uh, to get an idea of what we were looking at. Um, there are some different ideas that John and I were discussing this afternoon as far as the uh, the uh, method of, of um, attack, basically. But um, each phase of this will be definitely involve the community. We've always tried to involve the community in anything sure. that we do and any changes that we make. Um, so I think we're pretty good at that by now. Yeah. Um, and, and we'll continue to, to do that for sure. Okay. Especially in something that is going to be this much of a change to an area that has been pretty much the same for a long time, you know. Thank you. Well, I, I appreciate this with this grant because wherever we can save funds, I know we've in the past have always tried to get stormwater grants. And um, I think this is another indication we need it. It will help us out tremendously in this project. Yeah, and once we get further along in the project, uh, once we have permits and um, some further along drawings, we can also put in for a TMDL grant to try to leverage our match uh, with more state funds that, that may even lower our match further than that. So, right. okay. you know. Thank you, Alan, very much. Uh, any further questions from Council before I open up for public comment? This time, out, the floor is open for Agenda Item 9. Agenda Item 9 is open. Dale Abrams, CRA resident. Um, is there any changes to any of the information that was put up on the website? 
regarding this information? Yeah, the, the amounts changed. Okay, the only thing that's changed is the amount? Yes, ma'am. Um, I'm looking at the draft, and I'm looking at the application deadline says close of business March 31st, 2015. And then it says FDEP has granted an extension. I spoke to, I think it was Peggy or Jesse Springer today at FDEP, and she told me that it was March 31st and that there was no extension granted and that she said the city could still submit the grant application. However, um, the grant application, the grant applications that meet the deadline will be able to jump into that pot first. I guess that's how that works. And then if there's anything money's left, then that's what would be available to us. Um, so I just want to get that out there. Okay. The other thing is I'm a little confused because in the beach caster it says the DeSoto Field stormwater conversion which says the estimated cost is 420000 And I know I asked this question the other night on Monday. Um, it's got an asterisk that says city's cost after anticipated impact fee or grant funding. And I believe, um, Courtney, you explained that regarding the impact fee that the county has a pot of money somewhere that we may be able to access. Not for this project. That's, that's for a different project. Uh, okay, so the money, the 420, I believe you mentioned 420K that the county has on Monday night is not available to us for this? Not for this. That's, that's that, for that's transportation frozen. impact fees. So that's, that's for TPO? It's for transportation. Transportation. Yes. Okay, so that, so that won't play into this. Okay, so then we look at the grant funding, which is what we're doing here. And why does it say that the estimated cost for the DeSoto field storm order co conversion is 420? And then over here, we're looking at 920. After and it's called the DeSoto Stormwater Treatment Retrofit Project. Are these two different projects? No, it's the same project. This is a grant authorization form for a grant, and we have to title it certain ways for grant agencies. The Beachcaster said that we would, the cost, estimated cost for the project was 420000 after grant funding. And you see here matching funds at $379,000 or $389,500. So as we move forward on projects, we get better and better estimates, and this is one of those cases. So it is actually a little less than the 420000 we estimated in the Beachcaster. Okay. So why would FDEP be telling me that no extension has been granted, and then you're giving me information stating that they did give you an extension. Um, I'm a little confused on that, and maybe you can clarify that um, as far as that's concerned. And, you know, I know that credits are a big deal. It's all about credits. And, you know, I guess that's the reason why we're going to 41% versus 40% on the match, okay, um, as far as that's concerned. Um, and I do agree that we need to have some discussions with people in that particular area because this is a big deal. And I also had asked the other night um, someone if anyone has contacted Indian Harbor Beach and the residents over in that particular area. Thank you. Um. I've talked to the Indian Harbor Beach City Manager several times about this project, particularly because part of their city will be treated by this project, so they have an opportunity to participate in the project with us. But you can go ahead and... Um, I did talk to Tallahassee, and I did get an extension. The, re the genesis of this was that I received an email from the mayor regarding the notification of this um, the um, application period opening uh, a week before it was due. That week, everybody was on spring break. Our engineers in Volusia County, they are in Volusia County. Their staff was 
very shortened by vacations and things like that. We tried feverishly to get this completed before, and we were going to ask to call a special meeting of the council to get this thing going. I made a phone call on Thursday to Catherine Brackett, whose name is on the notification in, in Tallahassee, told her of the situation because there was other factors involved. There was there at at one point we were not eligible for this because there was a discrepancy between the language of point source and non-point source. And once that language was clarified through the county, through the DEP, through the EPA, then we realized that yes, we were in fact eligible for this this project. We I then I, I explained this to Catherine. She she told me specifically, she said, look, as long as we can get it before the evaluation period, we it, it's fine. You want you don't want to wait too long, but this, the evaluation period opens in spring, um, spring dash summer 2015. There's no hard and fast date of when the evaluation period begins. The they want to, to have the uh, applications in by March 31st, but given the circumstances under which we were notified, we are not on the list to be notified via the email. I have, I have the email list and we were not on it. The only way that we received this email was through the Florida League of Cities to the mayor to me. So the, all these, like I said, all of these um, conditions and um, situations were explained to Catherine Brackett um, in, at DEP and she is the person whose name is on this email and she is the one that, get, that told me that the March 31st date was flexible. Thank you very much, Alan. Public comment still open? And then further bring it back to council. Um, we've done great on grants. Now, thank you for getting this. It just you know, came across an email to me and that same day I forwarded. But, you know, this is, we've done this before and we've done real good at it. We've gotten $20 million, over $20 million for our city in grants. And this is how we can make, our, stretch our money. And if we would not be good to the city if we didn't try to get all the grants and the money was out there to help with the defer the cost. Yeah. And uh, to me, this is the right way to do it. Only comment I would have is it wasn't too long ago when a whole grant process was shut down. And we weren't doing grants at all. So thank you to you and Alan and, and Mr. Mayor for going back and resurrecting this because it's, it's one of the things that we've capitalized on this city for many years. We went for a short period of time with no grants for anything and uh, glad to have it back. So nice job, guys. And if, if I may, I, I would really like to thank John because John Fergus worked as hard or harder than I did trying to get this thing going and, and it just, we ran into brick wall after brick wall. So. You know, kudos to him and, and um, you know. But that's John. Mm -hmm. Thank you, John. Specialty. Appreciate and welcome back and helping us with this. You know, um, do I have you, a motion? You, you alluded to the fact that we've done great in grants, but we've done great with working with FDEP. Oh, yeah. And they know who we are. And when, you know, when something like this happens and we can articulate the situation, They've been very good at working with us over the years, so um, it's great that they're still there for us. So with that, I'll... Excuse me um, one second. Ma'am, please. Take, we have other people in the audience, and we keep the chatter down. No, I'm not, Kevin. just asking you to please watch your talking. Thank you very much. I'd like Sorry, to make a motion me. to authorize staff to submit a Section 319H grant application in the amount of up to $950,000 to construct stormwater system improvements in the DeSoto Parkway drainage basin with a total project cost of up to $950,000 and a city match of up to $389,500 to come from the stormwater utility or the capital asset fund. Second. I have a motion by Vice Mayor Montanero, second by Councilman Osmer. Any further discussion from Council? Lenore? Councilman Breimer? Yes. Councilman Osmer? Yes. Vice Mayor Montanero? Yes. Mayor Catino? Yes, motion passes. Staff, thank you very much. Thank you. John, thank, thank you. Alan. Thank you, John.
Moving on to agenda item 10, um, proposed um, agenda items for our next council meeting. Like I always say, if you have anything that needs to go to Courtney, um, please get it to her. Okay. Moving on to agenda item 11, appointments to boards. I'll make a motion to uh, appoint reappoint Kayla Rue to the Beautification Board as a regular member with a term ending 5-118 and reappoint Alex Rudloff to the Code Enforcement Board as a regular member, term ending 4-218. I have a motion by Ca Vice Mayor Montanero, second by uh, Councilman Brimer. Any further discussion? Here none, Lenore. Councilman Osborne? Yes. Councilman Brimer? Yes. Vice Mayor Montanero? Yes. Mayor yes, motion passes. A new appointment? Um, I'd like to make an, a, a motion to appoint Stephen Terry to the Planning and Zoning Advisory Board to uh, a, the regular position. Second. I have a motion by Vice Mayor Montanero, second by Councilman Brimer, to appoint uh, Steve Terry to Planning and Zoning. Any further discussion? Councilman Osborne? Yes. Councilman Brimer? Yes. Vice Mayor Montanero? Yes. Mayor yes, motion passes. Thank you. Uh, moving on to agenda item 12, approve, approve minutes. Make a motion to approve the uh, regular meeting minutes of the March 18, 2015 meeting as submitted. Second. I have a motion by Vice Mayor Montanero, second by Councilman Osmer. Any further discussion? Hearing none, Lenore. Councilman Brimer? Yes. Councilman Osmer? Yes. Vice Mayor Montanero? Yes. Mayor Tino? Yes. Motion passes. Any further business? Hearing none, the meeting's adjourned. Thank you, staff. Appreciate it.